Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, and today, and forever. The Church of Jesus Christ presents Pastor and Evangelist Pete Rowe. Praise the Lord. All right, I want to welcome everybody today to the program. We do love the Lord. Appreciate you for being with us, and thank God for this privilege. And children, as always, we need your prayers, and need to always remember one another and pray one for another, because these are days that people need help in prayer. And we're going to go ahead and get right into our message here today. As you know, I've been speaking concerning now the tribulations that I can't say is out in the future because I know it's already upon us. And when you read the book of Revelation chapter 9 about these locusts, that was the programs I've been before. Now, these are simply building up of armies and all of the things nuclear that's facing you now and the fear that's up on this earth. But now, children, one thing is definite and certain. What we find in the Word of God, it will come to pass. And if you remember there when I was reading you out of this ninth chapter, when that sixth angel sounded, then it was said to loosen the four angels that were bound in the great river Euphrates, which had been prepared for to do some slaying. Now, when God allows time to fulfill, then it has to happen. And truly, children, is God is my helper. 9-11, I believe, help open up a lot of this smoke that came up on the earth. And when I'm talking about smoke, I'm not talking about just because when they blew up the Twin Towers and all, and all that smoke, if you remember, seen on the news in New York, it just about covered the whole skies. But truly, right out of that happening came armies up on earth. The next thing you know, men were roaring and all of a sudden we started hearing about nuclear buildup, stronger than ever. These are things that are uh, preparing for this final day that Peter wrote about perdition of ungodly men. Now, this don't let us think that we don't have a change because God's people's always been protected but whether we like it or not there is an end there is a coming of the Lord that don't matter how many of these so called scholars is teaching when Jesus said it's over he's coming to really take us out of here but we're going to be inheriting a new heaven and earth and all these old things including the earth is going to pass away so men's done some damage to God's people in believing. And we're going to have to get out of it because that delusion that people's believing lies can bring down nation. So what you need to do is to be in love with studying and know what's to befall us. Because children, God gave you this book. Now, I'm just going to tell you some things here. Now, the way they're teaching that the church is to be taken out of raptured and Revelation 6 on up to the end of the Bible, we won't be here. Not a bit of that's true. Because number one, the fourth chapter of the book of Revelation had nothing to do with the church being taken up. Now they use these as theories, as ways of escaping. They'll use Enoch because he was translated not seeing death, the church will be gone. All of these is men's teachings. There is children, and I'm playing for you to study. There is no Bible that tells you that we're not facing the hour of tribulation. You are facing it. But we've always been protected by God and we will be in the future. But now, I'm going to give you the scriptures that, that they're crossing and, and misstruing and that's damaging the people. But children, it's time for us to wake up and open our eyes and start reading to see what is right. But anyway, let me show you something here now out of the 16th chapter of the book of Revelation. And listen to this right quick in verse 1. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. Now notice that. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there was a noisome and grievous sore upon men which had the mark of the beast, 
and upon them which worshipped his image. See, all of that's the times of it, it we've read to you out of Revelation 13 and so forth. Children, the son of perdition, the man of sin, will be sitting in a temple, but it ain't going to be the Holy Ghost temple. It's going to be what they're building back in the Middle East or wanting to. And children, we're going to be showing you the church is facing these hours. It don't mean that God ain't protecting us. I've never worried about that. He's always protected us. But watch this. Your Bible said the first went and poured out his vow upon the earth. And there fell a noisome, grievous sore upon the men that had the mark of the beast and upon them that worshipped his image. And the second angel poured out his vow upon the sea. And it become as the blood of a dead man. And every living soul died in the sea. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and the fountains of waters. And they became blood. And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast and shalt be, because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of saints and of prophets. And thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. See, if you remember, even in Moses' day, when God plagued the water, turned waters to blood and so forth, well, it didn't affect the people of God. God was there with them, see? So God's always going to be with us. But I'm going to tell you, that's the reason Paul told you to get that armor on, that you can stand in this evil day, and surely you can look around and see the destructions that's building up. And it's not going to get better. Honey, all this fires and devastation in California and all of these destructions that's hitting, that's just letting you know that the day of the Lord is at hand. Now watch this. Verse 8. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with great, scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which has power over these plagues, see there? And they repented not to give him glory. And the fifth angel poured out his vow upon the seed of the beast. Watch this now. And his darkness, his kingdom was full of darkness. They gnawed their tongues for pain and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds, see there? And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. That's over in that Middle East area there. I rock now. And the water thereof was dried up. Here it is. That the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And John said, I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the, that great day of God Almighty. Now everybody listen to verse 15. Jesus said, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments lest he walk naked, and they shall see his shame. Now, verse 15, isn't he definitely talking to the people of God here? Blessed is he that watcheth and keeps his garments. Watch your garments. That's you that are born again. Now, lest you walk naked, and they see your shame. So why is he putting this in here if we're not here? He is talking to the people of God to guard yourself. That's why Paul said, put that whole armor in Ephesians 6, that you can stand in the evil day. We're not going to be taken out of here. I know people want to hear that, but I'm not going to lie to you. You go with me to Revelation 15 and 1. Listen to this. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels which had the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire. Listen to it. And them that had gotten the victory over the beast, over his image, over his mark, over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass having the harps of God. Now you tell me, that has to be Holy Ghost people. 
But the world says, well, the church is going to be taken out before the tribulation. I'll tell you this much, if God takes the church out, there'll be no Holy Ghost here. Because that's where God lives, in the church, and the church is the people. But John said, I saw them that had gotten the victory over the beast. You wouldn't need to get victory over something if you're not here. Children, Jesus said himself in Matthew 24 and verse 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun would be dark and the moon would not give her light. The stars would fall from heaven and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. He has not come when this earth was in the tribulations. Children, God help us understand these things. John said, I'm your brother and companion in the tribulation. We are facing these hours. Listen to John out of Revelation 7. I know people want to fight it, but truth's truth. This is Revelation 7 and verse 9. After this, which was after the sealing of the 144,000, I beheld in lo a great multitude which no man could number of all nations, kindreds, peoples, tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hand. Now watch this. And cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne, about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing, glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, honor, be power, and might be unto our God forever and ever. And he said, Amen. Now, listen to verse 13. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, to John, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? Where did they come from? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. See, John didn't try to put an imagination. He said, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. And therefore they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple, and he that sits on the throne shall dwell among them. See there? They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb, which is in the midst of the throne, shall feed them, and lead them unto the living fountains of waters, and God will wipe away all tears from their eyes. Who were these? That came out of great tribulation and washed the robes and did the Bible say here that they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night <clears throat> now to prove that Matthew 25 31 shows you they're here when he comes your Bible said in Matthew 25 31 when the son of man shall come in his glory then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Now that's that throne that they're before the throne of God and serve him day and night. Did you know what God's throne is? That's his glory. He'll sit upon the throne of his glory. Remember he told the apostles, you're going to sit upon 12 thrones. God was giving them power for our sake. And children, when we either die in the Lord or if the Lord should come and take us. Where do we go? Don't we go into glory? And that's His throne. We're going right into the heart of God. Honey, as God is my helper, God's people is going to be fashioned like His glorified body. That's all going to happen at His coming and that will take a resurrection to do that. See? Now, John said here, What are these that are arrayed in white robes and whence came? Then he said, Sir, thou knowest. Well, he told him, These are they that came out of great tribulation. Revelation 15 tells you plainly 
that they got victory over the beast and over his image. Well, let's go a little further. Go to Revelation 13. Now, it takes time, but study Revelation 13. And when John was seeing this beast, like a lion, a leopard, and a bear, and so forth, that was your kings and kingdoms. As Daniel seen the great image of the beast in his day. Nebuchadnezzar did, and Daniel interpreted it. Nebuchadnezzar dreamed seen a great image. That was the image of beast then. The head of it was Nebuchadnezzar the gold, medial person the silver, the Grecian Empire the third of iron, I mean of brass, and then your fourth beast was your Roman Empire. God help us. That's the beast that was and is not, and yet it is. And it's going to be the eighth. What I'm trying to show you, buddy, this beast that everybody thinks all's in the future, it's been around. Because the devil built up as a great dragon, a beast, and all of this is just ungodly men bringing the earth into production. Now, listen to it. Revelation 13. Now, I, 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 it's getting a little late, so you can read that whole chapter. But I'm going to drop down here to about verse 4. Or three, uh, let's just go through it all. We might as well. Verse 1. John said, I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up, rise up out of the sea, having seven head and ten horns. See, that's that same power. There's never been but one beast, and he's got the seven head and ten horns. But during history of time, Herod's day, Herod was the red dragon having seven head and ten horns, which was wrong backing him up. All through time, this beast has been a ruling. And watch your Bible here because of the devil. And the beast which I saw was like to a leopard, his feet the feet of a bear, his mouth as the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power, his seat, and great authority. And I saw, here it is, one of his heads as it were wounded to death. Now that's when Christ put the wound upon that beast. As God is my helper, that's when he bound him too. And now he's getting that key back to be loosed again. So watch what happened. I saw one of his heads as it was wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. So that means he's coming up out of the earth again. And all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who's able to make war with him? And there was given him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue. Forty and two months, aren't you final three and a half years? And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and them that dwell therein. Now watch this, verse 7. Read in your Bible. And it was given unto him to do what? Make war with the saints. And to overcome them. Power was given them over all kindred tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him <coughs> whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. See there, children? Watch this. If any man have ear, let him hear. He that leads into captivity, go into captivity. He that killeth with a sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Right there shows you, children, we're not gone when that man of sin is, is in force and that whoever don't bow and worship him and so forth. Read your Bible here. It tells you plainly that it was given to him to make war with the saints and overcome them. Remember even in Revelation 6, John saw under the altar of the soldiers that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, the word of God and their testimony and so forth. And they were crying, How long ago, Lord, does thou not judge and avenge your blood upon them that dwell on earth? Well, what did God do? He gave them white robes and told them to rest for a little season till their fellow servants and brethren should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Now children, when you start studying your Bible, and I'm not being hard, I'm just being plain, okay? You have a right as a Christian. You say, well, I trust my pastor. Well, it don't hurt to trust him enough to read after him. 
to make sure, you know, to help him out if he needs you. Read after me or anybody else. Because children, you're going to have to open your eyes and realize multitudes right now is coming into a decision, valley of decision. We're going to have to choose God or we're going to be cast into the lake of fire. That delusion to believe a lie has already hit this earth. Now, let me show you something. This is the Word of God, and we need to hear Jesus. In the book of Matthew 24, when He was asking, they were asking about the signs of His coming and the end of the world. Now, watch this in Matthew 24. Turn with me. Matthew 24, and verse about... 27. Matthew 24, verse 27. This all links together to the coming of the Lord. Listen to it. Verse 27. For as the lightning comes out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together at your saints. <coughs> verse 29. Immediately... After the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened. The moon will not give her light. Stars will fall from heaven. Powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then, come on, shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Did he say every eye here? Remember, Revelation 1, verse 7, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. Children, there's no getting around it. There's no sneaking in here of the Lord. Now, I do agree the day of the Lord's overtaken. It has. People don't know what to do anymore. And I'm going to tell you something. When you're deceived, it does overtake you. But if you're a Christian, you ought to be watching and praying that you're counted worthy to escape these things, which is not by going out of here. That's what's hurt us. They're taking scriptures and perverting it. Now, I'm going to get into it as I'm going on. But when Paul said, let no man deceive you, for that day shall not come except there's a falling away first. And, and I heard one preacher twist it, claims to be a preacher, and said that falling away first was a mistake. It should be catching away first. See how they want to twist the Word of God to get their way? But Paul said, don't let them spoil you. Don't let them fool you. Children, you're in the time we need to listen to God. Jesus said immediately after the tribulation, isn't it sad that people won't hardly believe what you can read because some church pastor got him a little theory or got him a little revelation outside of the Word of God. We need to really get serious in this last day because the church can't come together when we're so divided and, and people can't hardly get along with each other. That's sad. I don't expect everybody to know it all because we don't none. But surely we can read. And we've got plenty of warnings of the coming of the Lord. But children, he can't come contrary to what he wrote in the book. And you just look around at you and listen to what Jesus said about these things. Go with me to right quick to the book of Luke, chapter 21. See, this is a scripture that they want to twist, but it ain't talking about the rapture of the church. Watch your Bible here. Now read it all when you get time, but Matthew, or Luke 20, 21, verse 25. And there shall be signs in the heaven, or in the sun. There shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars. And upon the earth, the stress of nations with perplexity. The wave, the sea and the waves are rolling. Now, children, that's going on. Men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, Jesus said, Look up, lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. 
And he spoke to them a parable, but behold, the fig tree and all the trees. See? That meant fig trees too. When they now shoot forth, you know, of your own selves that summer's nigh to hand, so likewise you, when you see all of these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of heaven or kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all be fulfilled. Then he said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Now, here's what I'm getting to. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting, drunkenness, curse of this life, and so that day come upon you unaware. Children, that's all you hear out of people is I don't have the time. That's why Jesus called it a snare. We better start making time for God. He said, For as a snare shall it come upon all them that dwell upon the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. See, they take verse 36 as a rapture escaping, but it don't have nothing to do with that. It means having your praying right, watching, so when things start happening, you're prepared for it. You can stand. Because Paul said it's going to get bad. He should put on the armor of God that you can stand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore. See? We're facing this evil day. And the good news is it's just bringing the Lord closer. Jesus said, Behold, I come as a thief. And that's why we need to be watching. We need to be praying and always be on guard because we don't know what hour. The Lord can take us out in death or He can come get us whatever. But now He's got things that has to be fulfilled. And that's why He tells us to watch and pray always. So children, I see my time about up for this part. Be sure to stay with me. And we love you. Write us, send any prayer requests, children, and study these things out because the day of the Lord is upon us. And we need to be prepared at all times. So God bless you our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. We would like to thank you for joining Brother Rowe and invite you to continue with him in outreach. Your prayers and support will be deeply appreciated. If God leads you to help in this ministry, please send your contributions to the Church of Jesus Christ, Post Office Box 283, Baxter, Kentucky 40806. And may God bless you.